I do this for you. You gotta do something for me. What's up, YouTube? This your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another Power video. If you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and leave your comments, theories, everything down below. Now, today, I will be talking about Power Season 6, Episode 8. This is the recap, and overall, this was another shocker for a lot of people. Um, I'm going to go over it as quickly as possible for you guys. I'm going to try to focus on the key points. If I miss anything, let me know down below. Let me know how you felt about tonight's episode of Power. We get into the end, man. It's getting very close to the end. And a lot of stuff happened in this episode, man. This is one of those episodes where you almost had to go back and watch some of season four, which I was not about to do. But let's begin. We get the return of bitch ass Dre and he's back because he has a problem. He wants to get off. He wants to get off this ankle monitor. Cooper Sacks is not letting down and he's very pissed off. He, Pretty much, Dre wants to take out Cooper Sacks. You know what I'm saying? Cooper Sacks is continuing to ask Dre for more leverage. Does he have Ghost? Does he have Tommy? Dre ain't going for none of that no more. He's tired of playing games with Cooper Sacks. Cooper Sacks pretty much just walks off and plays Dre. Now, Dre, he calls Ghost and lets Ghost know about why he wasn't at the meeting with Jason. And it's because he has the ankle monitor on him. Your boy Ghost ain't trying to hear all that. You know what I'm saying? He's not really trying to hear all that or why Dre ain't there. Dre wants to meet up with Ghost. Ghost ain't having it. Having it. And he's like, look, boy, I ain't messing with you with that ankle monitor. You might as well cancel it. It's over. You, you can forget about working with Jason. It's done. So you already know Dre is out for vengeance. You know he's going to try to do something in this episode to get back. Now, Cash, Lakeisha, Tommy, they moved out in the suburbs and, you know, they're getting used to it, and your boy Tommy lets Cash know, like, look, if anything happens to you, if anybody messes with you, whether it's people, the police, and he makes sure that he said police, you know, if they mess with you, you let me know. You do what they say, but you let me know what happens, and I will take care of it. You know what I'm saying? So Tommy's already planting that seed in Cash. Cash believes he can trust Tommy, and it will come back in this episode. Now, Tamika returns, and she pretty much tells Cooper Sacks that Mr. Warner pretty much used him as the scapegoat, that he really, pretty much that he's really screwed. You know what I'm saying? Um, all this stuff is going to go down, and it's going to look bad on Cooper Sacks. I mean, he's pretty much dug himself his own grave. Cooper Sacks, he's trying to get the help of Tamika because he's trying to figure out what else can he get to, you know, crack this case. Maybe he can get something out of Tariq. He goes to Tariq, he goes to the school, asking him once again about the apartment, Joe Proctor and all that stuff. Tariq played it smooth. He's like, look, you can't be talking to me. I don't have my parents around or nothing like that. Like, that's illegal. Um, Cooper Sacks is very desperate. And once again, we got to remember, Cooper Sacks, he's the common denominator of all of this. I will explain it once again at the end of this recap. But he's the reason why all this stuff is happening. Now, he's not done yet. He goes to Lakeisha because he's trying to get something out of Lakeisha. And he's pretty much telling Lakeisha, like, look, you might as well give me something because once we get Tommy and if you don't give us nothing, we can pretty much book you down as an accomplice and you can go down as well if you knew about all this. Lakeisha gives Cooper Sacks nothing, which is very smart. She ain't snitching yet. She, haven't, she ain't giving nobody nothing right now. Cooper Sacks is very desperate and he's going to do whatever it has well, whatever it takes to get exactly what he wants, which is more drama and trouble for other people. Now we get to see Tariq's teacher, Mr. Radnar, and we see his character. We see this dude as a drug head. He wants some drugs. He tries to trick Tariq, but Tariq played off pretty cool. He goes all in his book bag trying to see if he had drugs. But Tariq knows that this dude probably can be used. You know what I'm saying? We probably can use him to sell drugs if that's the case. But Tariq will be doing some investigation later on on that teacher. Now, Kate Egan has returned and she tells Lakeisha about Holly. We cutting straight to the point. She tells her straight about Holly the truth that Tommy killed her and that the same thing pretty much could happen to her. Now, Lakeisha, you can tell that she's kind of, you know, shocked. But she explains to Kate Egan that she's not Holly. And she pretty much kicks Kate Egan out. 
this right here makes Lakeisha even more scared of Tommy, knowing that he killed Holly, that he didn't tell her about this. Um, it makes her very scared. Now, if anything happens, she's going to be very cautious to let Tommy know anything. Now, your boy Tariq, he goes to the daycare. He talks to Tasha because they're a team now. Um, mama and son, you know, the drug game. He tells her about the teacher and stuff like that. And Tasha's like, all right, maybe we can get some more dirt on this teacher. Maybe we can use him because if he want to sell drugs, we can make him sell drugs, but we can't let him know it's us. So they're going to try to come up with a brilliant plan on that teacher. Now, Tasha's moms walk in and she see all the money out because Tasha just count money. She got the money sitting out there trying to teach Tariq on how to cut a brick. And she's pissed off. Tasha's mom, she's like the voice of the people. She's like, look, you're going to get this boy killed just like Raina. Um, You got him in a drug game doing all this shit. You're going to get that boy killed. Now, Tasha's like, look, I'm trying to save his life. And she's like, only thing that can save his life in your life is Jesus. She kept it real. Um, Tasha's mom don't be playing around, man. She do not be playing around. Now, Ramona, she finally meets Tariq. And she's talking about ghosts. And about him being in politics. And of course, Tariq has to bring up a background check. And Ghost gets pissed off. Like, all right, it's time to go. Ghost was actually trying to be nice to Tariq. He was telling him that he had a basketball court in his name um, for the QCP and stuff like that. But Tariq was just being very childish. And, you know, you know how Tariq is. But Ramona told him that he could be just like his dad. If he put it puts his mind to it, he can do anything. So... We're going to see how this plays out with Tariq and also with Ramona and Ghost. Now, like I told you guys, Cooper Sacks, he's very eager this episode. He has nothing to lose pretty much but his life. So why not go for broke? He goes, he meets up with Blanca, and we see Blanca Rodriguez got her little girlfriend. But he takes her some evidence. He shows her that, look, Tariq, was, he went to the, the morgue, I, I believe, and he got the ashes of Canaan. He pretended that he was Eric Stark. Um, we knew this would come back up. Um, now this action right here, it activates playoff mode Blanca Rodriguez, because once this happens, she takes this to the whole nother level. She wants that Ray Ray case badly. Remember that was her case and she wants it. So she goes immediately to Dre. She's questioning him. She's promising him stuff that she can get the ankle monitor off. She can she can help him get Cooper Sacks off off his ass and everything. Dre he agrees and he gives up Tariq. He says that Tariq he told Tariq the location of Raymond Jones and that Kanan was in D.C. when Ray Ray was killed. So now she has a witness. She has a snitch. So this description read it was going to be a snitch. It wasn't just Lakeisha. <laughs> It was Dre. Now, Ramona is talking to Rashad Tate. She's trying to tell him that Ghost's name is high. James A. Pratchett's name is very popular and that he needs to pretty much be sticking with him. He doesn't want to hear it. He's still pissed off from last week's episode with Ghost um, plotting and planning with Derek against him. And then we see his running mate, I would say, his competition, Lorette. And we see that she is trying to figure out a way to be more diverse. That's at least that's at least what Sonny asked her. Sonny asked her, how can you be more diverse? Ramona is listening because I think she's plotting and planning to help Ghost become lieutenant governor for Lorette. We're going to talk more about that later. Now, Derek and Ghost pops up and talks about the QCP. They, they're there to answer questions. Rashad Tate plays it straight off. He said, don't nobody care about the QCP. Don't nobody care about two niggas, you know, running in politics. They don't want to, they don't care about us. And then he start dogging Lorette, talking about she don't know how to use an iPhone. She's dumb. And his mic is on the whole time. Your boy Derek paid off the dude. And your boy Rashad Tate's mic was on the whole time. He's pretty much done. You know what I'm saying? He's pretty much done. I'm surprised Ghost didn't come out and say, you know, you done fucked up, right? You know, you done fucked up, right? That's what Ghost should have said, but he had that look on his face like, ah, uh, I got you once again. Your boy Rashad Tate is going to have a panic attack. I told y'all, I've been praying for this. I wanted Rashad Tate to lose because I want to see his reactions. Now, Tariq, he goes, he gets some information about his teacher, Mr. Radnar, and he's going to take this information back to his mother. Apparently, Mr. Radnar has some history. His family ain't that good. You know what I'm saying? So maybe they can use him 
maybe Mr. Radnor needs the money himself. So it's very possible that they can work with him. Now, Ramona, she goes back to Rashad Tate because he's pretty much messed up his name. She tells Rashad Tate, maybe him and Ghost can do like a news presser and soothe over his name and maybe things can work out because Rashad Tate's pretty much screwed over. But Ghost is so popular and the people love Ghost so much, maybe it will help. So Rashad Tate at first played it off, but then he was like, okay, we can meet up with him later on and, you know, soothe over my name. Now let's get to Lakeisha. And if everybody wants to talk about Lakeisha, she gets pulled over by Blanca. And Blanca is in playoff mode this episode. She was working overtime, man. And she pretty much told Lakeisha, look, we got some uh, dirt. On, we got some dirt, pretty much. They didn't have nothing. All they had was her name and Tommy's name on uh, on his LAC, his LLC on and with Lakeisha's name and everything like that. They didn't have no concrete evidence on Tommy. Now, they took cash, which, you know, it was funny to me. They took cash and they was threatened, threatening Lakeisha. Blanca has nothing. If, if this was real life, if Lakeisha could have got out, instantly got out of jail. She was so pressured because cash is her weakness. She did not want to lose her son at all, which is very understandable. But I thought Lakeisha would be stronger and just say, you know what? All right, just take me in. You know, I get a lawyer. I get out. I get my son. But... Blanca got the girl Lakeisha to sign over that um, corroborating agreement and she will get immunity if everything goes down and if she corroborates with the feds. Now we get to Ramona. She goes to Ghost and tells him that Lorette wants him to be her lieutenant governor, as I was telling you guys earlier. So Ramona's true game plan is this. She doesn't really care about Rashad Tate. You know, of course, she wants to make sure he has a, a good image. But as of right now, the game plan is to make sure a ghost is good with Lorette and is good as a lieutenant governor. Now, Cash, he didn't listen to his mother. Lakeisha told him not to tell at all. She, he was not supposed to tell anything about being pulled over. He knew that was not going to happen, especially since Tommy told him to tell him, if the police say anything to you, let me know. So Cash tells Tommy and Tommy's pissed off. He's like, OK, they pulled you over. You know, he's thinking, like, why didn't she tell me? And then we see this funny looking ass dude. Like, what is this dude looking at? Like he was just staring at Tommy for no reason. Don't be surprised if this is the guy that kills Tommy Egan. You know what I'm saying? He may be the one. Now, I don't think he's going to be the one, but Tommy was pissed off. Like, what the hell are you looking at? I, I don't know why they put that in there. It was very funny, though. Um, of course, Tommy confronts Lakeisha about what happened. And Lakeisha is like, look, I didn't tell him anything. You know, I, I was scared. I, you know, I wanted to get my son. I didn't tell him nothing. Tommy's like, why didn't you tell me then? And Lakeisha is like, I didn't tell you because I heard that you killed Holly and I didn't want to, you know, give you a reason to kill me. Lakeisha pretty much, she told him some of the truth. Um, Tommy is like, damn, you know, you found out that I killed Holly because of Kate and you still here. So Tommy felt like Lakeisha was really loyal. He's like, damn, she knew about me killing Holly. You know, she's been here and she's been rolling with me and she ain't cracked yet. And she's still here. So Tommy now thinks Lakeisha is really loyal. But Lakeisha didn't tell Tommy the whole truth about her signing over those papers. She didn't say that. Which, in the long run, she has to create a new game plan for herself. Because now she knows she's in deep water. What is she going to do? Now we see Tariq planting the drugs in his teacher's trunk. You know, him and Tasha came up with a game plan on doing this. And the good part about this is... The teacher don't even know it's Tariq. It's an unknown person. He thinks it's Tariq, but he has no proof that it is. And of course, he's going to pay off. And Tariq can make good profit off of this. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see where the storyline goes. But to be honest with you guys, I don't trust this guy. Um, his family is dirty. The Valkers, you know, his mom and all that. I don't really trust them. But Tariq needs to be very careful around his teacher. I just feel like he can be very dangerous. Now, Blanca Rodriguez, a.k.a. Playoff Mode, is back, and she's now going to Ghost. She was talking to Ghost about Tariq, about, you know, what's going on, and she has some new evidence, so pretty much. Ghost don't want to hear nothing about that. He doesn't want to even be questioned. He says, look, I'm going to leave. You guys are harassing me. He's tired of her and Cooper Sacks, and he leaves. I mean, Ghost don't be giving no information up. Then we got a Spectre Gadget. Yes, 
Blocker Rodriguez has turned into a Spectre gadget all of a sudden. She takes this glass and you know she want to get that DNA up off of it. Fingerprints DNA. I would say this DNA because she's going to compare that with the blood sample that they found in Ray Ray's apartment. Like, really? Do I need to go back and watch season four? I understand Tariq was bleeding, but I don't remember them saying anything about blood being dry. Maybe they did, but damn, they got you having to go back and watch season four again, and I don't feel like doing all that. Now, Tommy and Ghost finally meet up. They said, you know what? We're going to finally have to take out Cooper Sacks. Tommy wanted to do it earlier, but Ghost was like, nah, we can't do that. He's a fed. He's a, you know, he's he's the feds. Um, Cooper Sacks in there beating off and shit. Look at him. Beating off. Really, Sacks? You couldn't go out and pay. Dude, you could have wanted to oh, pay for something. He's getting off, beating off. Let's look at this dude for one second. What is wrong with you, dude? Now, they were beating his ass. Honestly, I would have just smoked Cooper Sacks. I would not have let him live. You know, Tommy's talking shit to him. Cooper Sacks is running his mouth, giving every reason why he shouldn't die. He's telling Ghost that Tommy killed Proctor, Tommy killed Angela. Ghost's like, dude, I pretty much already know. And I ain't seen nothing. Now, of course, Ghost makes Tommy stop. He was going to kill him. Ghost is like, you owe me. He says, we can use Cooper Sacks because Angela's dead. Proctor's dead. We need someone on the inside. You owe me. So just let him live. I understand where Ghost is coming from, but at the same time, me personally, Cooper Sacks would have been dead. I'm not about to be walking around wondering what Cooper Sacks is going to do. You seen what he did after this. He still tried to go and try some shit. But luckily, Blanca told Ghost that he suspended and that no one is going to believe him anyway. Now, Blanca, she gets the DNA. And apparently, this DNA from Ghost is a 50-50 match with the blood or whatever. Um, not necessarily enough evidence, but they have a 50-50 match. So, it could be Tariq and also... Blanca explains to Mr. Warner that she also has Dre. So she about to get Dre to flip right now. And also, Lakeisha is on the way. You know what I'm saying? She about to get Lakeisha as well. So she thinks she's about to wrap the whole case up. Now, Dre with his bitch ass, he's back. And he's like, all right, let me loose. I pretty much gave you what you asked for, which was Raymond Jones and, you know, Tariq. Dre didn't say Tariq killed him. He just pretty much said that Tariq got the location from him and that Canaan was in DC, which they lied, you know, Lakeisha lied um, in season four about that. Now, of course, Blanca agrees, like, okay, takes off the ankle monitor. Now Dre is free. Dre is going to be a problem next episode. He's going to be very dangerous. Um, Ghost tells Tasha, like, look, you need to go question your girl Lakeisha because he found out that the feds is talking to her because of Tommy and everybody else running their damn mouth. I mean, they don't keep secrets on this show. Tasha's like, why do I need to go do it? Ghost is like, look, she's scared of me. She's not going to do it. I tried to talk to her in the past. You need to go do it. So Tasha now has to go plan to talk to Lakeisha about her talking to the feds and her shutting the hell up. And you already know it's going to be spicy. Now, Blanca Rodriguez is back once again, a.k.a. playoff mode. And she is working full time overtime. She goes to Tasha now. Now, this is what I don't get. Why? And I tell you guys this all the time. This is a pure example right here. Why would you go tell Tasha that you have another witness? She tells Tasha, look, I got a witness. Um, Tasha is pissed off because Blanca said we about to reopen the case on Raymond Jones and Tariq. Tasha's like, look, why are y'all going doing this? Like, what the hell is going on? Well, now Tasha knows there's another witness out there. And apparently, I mean, she thinks it's to, uh, it's uh, Lakeisha. It's quite obvious. Now we see Rashad Tate. He's pissed off because Ghost never showed up to that meeting. Actually, he did, but he came late. So all the press is gone. Um, Rashad Tate's chances of winning and soothing his name is over with. Rashad Tate tells Ghost that the QCP is done. It's not being funded anymore. And he's very pissed off. So we're going to see where that goes. Rashad Tate was pissed at Ghost. And Ghost was pissed that the QCP is done for. Now, Cooper Sacks, he goes to Mr. Warner. He talks to Mr. Warner. He's like, look, man, they beat me up. You know what I'm saying? I got jumped. I got pistol whooped. You know what I'm saying? They almost killed me. Look, Mr. Warner is not trying to hear all that. He says, you know what? You're fired, Cooper Sacks. I don't want to hear nothing. And if Tommy and Ghost did have you, you wouldn't be alive. 
You know what I'm saying? So he didn't believe him at all. Kicked him out. He's fired. You see him? He got the visitor tag on. Cooper Sacks is very desperate. To me, I think the dude mess, might, may mess around and survive the whole damn season, and I hope not. Lakeisha, she has a, is having a conversation with Blanca, and Blanca is telling her, look, we need you to come in, you know. Lakeisha is like, look, I don't know nothing. I, You know, I, I lied to you guys because I wanted to keep my son. And Blanca is like, look, well, if you don't testify, if you don't agree, you're going to lose all um, immunity, and it's pretty much a wrap for you. Like, we can come right now. We're on our way. Lakeisha lies, and she says, you know what, don't worry about that. I'll come to you. I got to go pick up my son from back basketball practice and I'll come to you. Now, Lakeisha never planned on snitching. As you can see right here, she packed all her stuff up. I think her plan was to just go pick up cash, but Tommy picked him up in the first place to surprise her. But Lakeisha's plan was to pick cash up and ride off at the sunset. She should have just left in the first place when Ghost gave her the opportunity to do it. Of course, Tasha pops up, confronts her about what's going on. And this was a very sad scene. You know, as much as I dogged out Lakeisha, it was very sad because you knew it was over. You just felt it like, oh, it's about to be over for her once Tasha came there. Now, Lakeisha, she told the truth. She's like, look, I've been ride or die. You know, I defended you. I helped you out. I lied for you. You know what I'm saying? I did so much for you. I was a good friend of you and you played me. You know what I'm saying? You played me, Tasha. I did all this shit for you. And all I'm trying to do is protect to is to protect my son. Like, this ain't got shit to do with Tariq. Tasha thinks this is all about Tariq. She thinks Lakeisha is about to go testify against Tariq. And your girl Lakeisha's like, look, this is about Tommy. Like, I'm leaving to protect him and me. And I can help everybody by just leaving. Now, of course, it gets even sadder when we see Tommy and Cash buying the ring because Tommy's about to propose. They're about to become official now. Tommy really felt like Lakeisha can be the one, especially after she learned the truth about him. And then we see in a very sad moment in power history, Lakeisha and Tasha, the fight. Now, I made the prediction earlier this year about a fight happening between Lakeisha and Tasha. And they actually was fighting for a little bit. Um, even though Lakeisha weighs more than Tasha, Tasha was able to get with her. They fighting over the gun and everything like that. It was very sad. They was building up to the the shocker of the night for a lot of people. And your girl Lakeisha is shot. Your girl Ka Tasha catches her first body that we have saw on power. I'm not saying she ain't caught a body. I'm pretty sure she probably has caught a body. But as far as what we saw, Tasha has caught her first body. Last episode was Lakeisha catching one. This episode was Tasha catching one. And Tasha told her, look, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? She didn't want to do it, but she had to. She felt like she had to protect her son and Tariq. The sad part was the witness that Blanca was telling her about was Dre. It wasn't Lakeisha. That's the sad part about it. And also, Tasha, get, she got into a fight with Lakeisha she had two earrings on when the fight first started. And as you can see right here, that other earring is gone. Tasha, you left that earring at the crime scene. World's Dumbest Criminals Part 2 may be coming because now the feds are going to be on you. Um, Tommy Egan is going to be on you. It was sad, y'all. And as much as I dogged out Lakeisha... That was a very sad scene, especially when Tommy came because he felt like this was it. He was about to actually start a family. It was about to be good. But he had to tell Cash to hold back because he seen something. He knew this wasn't about to end right. You know what I'm saying? He knew he had to go in there by himself. Now, he seen the body. It was very touching. And as bad as Tommy Egan is, this dude was, you know, he's the Michael Myers of power. This episode, you felt this pain. I don't care if you dislike Tommy Eager or not. Remember, I'm Team Ghost. I love Ghost, my dude. But I felt for Tommy right here. You know, it makes sense. If you guys watched Power Confidential when Courtney Kent was saying in the last, I think, two episodes ago or episode ago, she said she felt bad for Tommy. Now you truly understand why. This dude has lost everyone. He didn't really have a family growing up. You know, Holly is gone. You know, he loses Lakeisha. This dude has no one. A lot of people say it's karma. I've been reading in the comments. People were saying, well, that's what he get. It's karma. At the end of the day, 
I felt for your boy Tommy, but hey, this is the drug game. You know what I'm saying? You knew what you was getting into when you got into it. Lakeisha, unfortunately, she never had got into this. Tommy knew this. Everybody knew this. She wasn't built for it. The sad part was, even though she signed those papers, she was not about to snitch. You know what I'm saying? I know the description reads that Tasha confronts a snitch that's too close from home. And Lakeisha, would, Lakeisha did sign those papers. But her true results was, look, I was about to get the hell up out of there. Lakeisha was about to get the hell up out of there, man, in my opinion. I could be wrong, though. But it seemed, though, she was about to get up out of there. She had the gun and all the shit sitting out. Um, it really did seem like she was leaving, you know. One thing I would say about this, say this. As much as I dogged Lakeisha the whole season saying that she would crack, she never truly cracked until the very end. Um, she did step up to the plate a lot of times. To be a person that didn't want to be in the game, she did step up to the plate and put her work in. And at the end of the day, she made a minor mistake or a crucial mistake by signing those papers. But she had, she had two, uh, good intentions, in my, in my opinion. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. Everybody expected her to die anyway, but... A lot of people didn't expect Tasha to do it. And you guys can go back when I made my Tasha versus Lakeisha video that I made, I think, earlier this year. I made Tasha versus Lakeisha. I think it was like probably earlier this year. And uh, I talked about it. And I said that it's a high chance that Tasha kills Lakeisha, but it's not a high chance that Lakeisha kills Tasha. I felt like it would have been a fight scene, which it was. And Tasha would have a chance of killing her. And she did. It's sad, but hey, it happened. You know what I'm saying? It happened. And to be honest with you guys, I would have rather Tasha do it than Tommy because we are so used to Tommy doing this and Tasha not doing it, you know? And a lot of people thought I saw the episode early. I didn't see anything early. Trust me. I didn't see no episodes early. If I did, trust and believe. I would never spoil it for you guys. I don't spoil at all. If any type of spoilers that I give is the day after power, I know what I'm saying and I post videos the day after, but besides that, nope. I just give you it raw, uncut, what they give us. You know what I'm saying? And I wait until it after it airs. But overall, this was a touching episode. We about to go on a one week break. I'm gonna drop some heat for you guys. Um, get you guys caught up and ready for episode nine. Um, what do you guys think of tonight's episode? Did you really care about Lakeisha? Did you feel for Tommy? How did you feel about the whole thing? To be honest with you guys, the whole, you know, evidence thing with Lakeisha, with them taking cash was, it was a bull. They didn't really have nothing on Lakeisha, to be honest with you guys. I mean, Blanca had nothing. What evidence did she have on Tommy Egan? She had nothing. All that was, was her trying to plot and plan to try to trick Lakeisha to crack. And it worked. You know what I'm saying? It worked. So, as I told you guys earlier, Cooper Sacks. The uh, common denominator was Cooper Sacks. It was because he's the one that went and found. He got the, the photo of Eric Stark, which is Tariq. He took that photo to Blanca. And once he did that, it activated playoff mode. And once that happened, your girl Blanca start going around, getting all this evidence, collecting cups, glasses and shit, getting all types of DNA. She, inter she turns into a Spectre gadget. I mean... She pretty much put Lakeisha's life out there. And this is sad. But hey, at the end of the day, it's the drug game. And it's TV. It is what it is. But y'all know how it is. But you guys let me know. Give me your predictions, your theories, everything down below. Um, I will be dropping some more power videos this week for you guys. Um, and to be honest, how did you see this all ending? I mean, they're going to kill everybody off. To me, it doesn't make sense. They just kill all of them off. They got to do something. Something got to crack. We can't just have Tommy and goes dying. Um, I hope not. They got to figure this shit out. I see Tasha possibly getting locked up. But based off the trailer, it seems like the feds are going to try to turn Tasha and Tariq against Ghost. But we're going to see how it all plays out. But um, keep supporting your boy and I will continue to bring you more power content in the future. Damn, my voice all messed up right now. <clears throat> but it's your boy, Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.